Greetings, and welcome to another TV Box review. Taking the spin is another new TV Box sporting the latest Imlogic S905X3 processor, and this one has some RGB lighting effects. This is the A95XF3, and it's the 2GB 16GB model. I usually request the 64GB model for review, but at the time this was all that was in stock. So after the break, I will put it to the test, and let's see what the F3 has to offer. Stay tuned, a full review is up next. Welcome back. This is the box that it comes in. And to the back you have some specifications. It shows that the CPU is an Imlogic Quad-Core A55 processor. The GPU is the Quad-Core G31. It comes with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage, and it has dual-band 2.4 plus 5GHz Wi-Fi. So without further ado, I will do a quick unboxing. In the box you have nothing out of the ordinary. You have the new F3 TV box itself. You get one infrared remote. One HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter. And a user's manual. Let's take a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. The body is made of plastic, with the RGB light and the A95X logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one audio video port, and a DC power input jack. To this side, you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. There is nothing on the other side. At the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box, you have some cooling vents. I will now set it up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm back. In starting up for the first time the developers have started using these stunning motion graphics bearing their logo that I find quite appealing, and I prefer these to the regular animations. The animation takes about 25 seconds to complete after which you're greeted with a startup wizard. Once you have completed the wizard you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the launcher. And the reason for the screen looking like it's too bright, is because the SDR to HDR option is turned on by default in the display settings, a feature I noticed that's turned on in all their boxes. So I will disable the option and return. So this is the launcher with the settings turned off, and the display looks much better and the colors are well balanced. So in the Max model they have introduced this launcher with some unique features unseen in other boxes, and in this new model they have added some more features to customize both the launcher and the external appearance of the box. Features that we're familiar with are the horizontal scrolling panels with the ability to rearrange the order of the shortcuts. It has the shortcuts bar to the top that also has the same feature to rearrange the shortcuts. It has the one-click memory cleanup button for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. It has a navigation and status bar for easy navigation with mouse pointers, however, the status bar is not the full status bar. The second new feature is the main visual attraction which is the app to control the RGB lighting effects of the box. This app contains 64 RGB effects to choose from, and each effect has options to customize both the speed and brightness of the effect. 
This app can only be navigated using the stock remote for the box, and I will just show a couple effects for demonstration purposes. So kudos to the developers of A95X, as they have introduced another first in the industry with this next level RGB lighting effects. So back to the launcher. In the settings area under advanced settings you have the following options. 4K resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set priority between video and graphics. HDR display settings. Audio settings, with the option to select the audio output medium. Power key options. You have a root switch. You have picture mode options. and CEC control options. In the device preference area you have your standard system options, and an additional option to select an array of advanced Dolby Audio options including Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio settings. In the apps section they have pre-installed the following. The AirScreen app, App Installer, Cast Play for TV, Cetus Play for TV, a pair of file browsers, Kodi add-ons installer, Miracast, Mobdro, Movie Player, Netflix, Plex, the Google Play Store, Amazon Prime Video, the TV App Store, TV MC, and YouTube. So I will now install some additional apps needed for my review and continue. So I have successfully installed all my apps directly off of the Google Play Store and I didn't have to sideload anything because the box is running on the full mobile version of Android. So first, I will check the root access of the box. The root check app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. This is great for apps that require root access to work, however, this box has a root switch, so if you need to run an app that requires the box not to be rooted, then you have the option to switch it off. Remember to reboot the box for the change to take effect, and don't try to update the super user app as it will put the box into a permanent boot loop. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the A95XF3. This particular model comes with 2GB of DDR3 RAM, and 13GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. There is a 4GB 32GB model, and a 4GB 64GB model. The Bluetooth version is 4.0, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will connect a device to this later in the video. The CPU is the Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A55 CPU running up to 1.7GHz in 32-bit mode. 
The CPU is the Mlogic S905X3, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 Pi operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 55 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. To start the benchmark segment I will first show the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speed. The results show that the A95XF3 has a RAM copy speed of 2976 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 77 MB per second and a write speed of 70. The RAM copy speed is slightly lower than the X96 Air from my previous video and the lower CPU clock speed contributes to these results. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results are a bit different from my last video, where in this instance, the A95XF3 has maximum download speed on both the 2.4 and the 5 GHz band. The LAN port still fell by 70% due to its limited bandwidth, but the 2.4 band in this model doing much better than that of the X96 Air. I now show the results of the new Antutu version 8 benchmark, the score I will use to place it on my chart. The A95XF3 got a score of 71,459. And this is a good score, it's a bit lower than the X96 Air, and we'll see where it places on the chart in a moment. The Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark shows that the box got a score of 797 single core, and 2,152 multi core. A good score by the A95XF3, but the scores are also slightly lower than the X96 Air. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU Graphics Benchmark. The A95XF3 got a score of 5590 in the Ice Storm Extreme, and 516 in the Slingshot Test. These scores are also lower than the X5 Air, but it should perform well in some Android games given that it has better cooling. I will try that in a moment, but before I proceed let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores. The A95XF3 took position number 11 in reference to Antutu scores, just below its counterpart the X96 Air, which is not too bad given the lower CPU speed. This chart can be found on my website in full spreadsheet format, where you can interact with it and compare scores, see the link in the description area. So that ends the benchmark segment and I now turn to its entertainment features. To start this segment I will test to see if alternative launchers work on this box. By special request from a subscriber called Kinglifer, she requested that I move away from the ADW Launcher 2 and try the Lean Back Launcher. I downloaded the APK for the launcher and it could not install because the default launcher of the box is already called Leanback Launcher and it had a name conflict. So I reverted to the ADW launcher, and it works great with long click pop-up menus and drag and drop features. Next, I will test to see if screen rotation to portrait mode works on this box. I installed various rotation apps and none of them seem to work. So that's a negative. Screen rotation to portrait mode does not work on this box. I focus my attention now to streaming. For users looking to watch premium services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, you already saw that the F3 does not have the required DRM support to play these services in HD and 4K quality. 
you can however still use these services but you will only get standard 480p quality. The Android TV version of YouTube comes standard on TV boxes these days, and there is no longer the need to sideload it from an APK store. So YouTube plays up to 4K 2160p quality on this box. For users interested in casting their mobile device to the box have the option of using the official Miracast app. However, even after lowering the picture quality there were lots of latency issues. You also have the AirScreen app that works much better with minimal latency. For users wishing to use their mobile phones or tablets as a remote control to navigate the box, you have the Cast Play for TV app and the Cetus Play for TV app. I will now play my list of 4K video samples comprising of 4K HDR 10-bit videos at 60 frames per second, and videos with Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, and DTS audio formats. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. <laughs> Firm challenge. Gabi helping out. Uh, Koke helping out. Deciding that he showed dissent in booting the ball back into the pitch in the half time whistle had gone.
Juries, executioners, judges. This is the left channel. This is the left surround channel. The samples played perfectly and I think that I prefer the 4K playback on the F3 better than the 5X Air. I will now play my list of Dolby video samples through my receiver, comprising of 4K HDR 10-bit videos at 60 frames per second, and videos with Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, and DTS audio formats using the Kodi Media Player with digital audio pass-through enabled.
to the inside of your head. So this test proves that the A95XF3 has Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, and DTS surround sound output. For my final demonstration I will play some Android games. Attacking now. It's sloppy at the back here. Yeah, I don't think he'll look back on that with fondness. And in goes the cross. Great header, great goal! Oh, it has to be! Oh, yes, a late, late goal, and they're back in the game. We're all level again. Our vehicle's about to explode. Engaging the enemies.
The A95XF3 has very good gaming performance, even better than the X96 Air due to better heat management. Gameplay was smooth and key mapping apps worked as expected. For players of the new Call of Duty mobile game, the only key mapping app compatible with this game is the Panda Mouse Mapper using a keyboard and mouse. Pay $3 for the full version and you're ready to rock. In summary, I was worried about the lower CPU clock speed that it would affect its performance resulting in poor user experience, but instead I got quite the opposite. This is both an attractive TV box first of its kind with RGB lighting to have in your entertainment system as well as a great all-round performing TV box. The interface is great, streaming is great, 4K video playback with Dolby Atmos and DTS audio is great. Wi-Fi reception is max on both bands. Gaming is excellent. And the box does not overheat. The three issues I had with this box is the status bar has no system controls, it has no DRM support for Netflix in HD or 4K quality, and the LAN port is limited to 100 megabits per second. Would I recommend this box? Most definitely. Get the 4GB 64GB model and now you're in the game. See the affiliate link in the description area of this video to ensure that you get the actual product with the actual hardware as seen in this video, and not a cheap knockoff. I have come to the end of my review. If you're interested in the A95XF3 see my associate link in the description area or on my website. Using my link also lends support in acquiring more great TV boxes for review. Thanks for watching, it was a pleasure having you for today's review. Give this video the thumbs up if you like the information presented, and if you have any questions about this box leave a comment in the comments area or send me an email. And if you would like to see more videos hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to receive an email when I release a new video or do a giveaway. Keep the streaming community alive, and see you in the next one.